magnetic force is equal to the product of the magnetic field times current I times length sine theta. We said when we use this formula is only when the conductor is inclined to an angle. The angle that the conductor must be inclined to must not be 90 degrees. If theta is equal to 90 degrees, if theta is equal to 90 degrees, it means the conductor is perpendicular to the force. It means it is perpendicular. If theta is equal to 90 degrees, it means the conductor is inclined at an angle of 90 degrees. So if theta is equal to 90 degrees and I substitute it here, you have that the magnetic force is equal to BIL sine 90. But sine 90, but sine 90 is equal to 1. Since sine 90 degrees is equal to 1, I have that the magnetic, magnetic force is equal to BIL. Magnetic force is equal to BIL. Where B, where B, where B is equal to the magnetic field. Where B is equal to the magnetic field. The unit of magnetic field is Tesla, capital T. Where B is the magnetic field, Tesla. I is the current. I is the current in ampere. The unit of current is ampere, capital A. And L is the length of the conductor. L is the length of conductor. The length of the conductor. The unit of length is meter. F is equal to BIL. This formula is used to calculate any question that have the word wire or conductor. So if you see in a question, calculate the force in a wire, calculate the force in a conductor, you use this formula. If you see any question that has to do with calculating the force in a wire or calculating the force in a conductor, you use this formula. F is equal to BIL, the product of the magnetic field times current times the length of the conductor. If we go for that to reduce this question, we said we use this formula when we have a question that has to do with wire or conductor. If we go further to reduce this formula, we have that magnetic force, magnetic force, we have that magnetic force is equal to BIL. Magnetic force is equal to BIL. Let's say this force is not on a wire. Let's say this magnetic force is on an electron. If it's on an electron, we don't use this formula. Magnetic force is equal to BIL, but I know that Q Q is charge. Q is equal to current times time. Q is equal to current times time. Since I know that Q is equal to current times time, I want to make I subject of formula from here. So if I make I subject of formula, I is equal to Q over T. I is equal to Q over T. In this equation, call this equation equation 1 and call this equation equation 2. If I substitute equation 2 into equation 1, if I substitute equation 2 into equation 1, in place of I, I will put Q over T. So equation 1 becomes magnetic force. Magnetic force is equal to the product of the magnetic field times the current. In place of the current, I will put Q over T. In place of the current, I will put Q over T. I'm substituting equation 2 into equation 1 times the length of the conductor, times the length of the conductor. This formula is the same thing as magnetic force is equal to B times Q times L over T, times L over T. I can rearrange this equation to be this, but I know that, but L over T, but L over T is distance or displacement over time, but L over T is displacement over time. And in our physics, displacement over time is velocity. Displacement over time is equal to velocity. Since displacement over time is velocity, it means this equation can be written as magnetic force, magnetic force in an electron. Magnetic force in an electron is equal to the product of magnetic field times the charge Q times velocity. F is equal to B times Q times B, where F M is the magnetic field, magnetic force. B is the magnetic field, Q is the charge of an electron. The charge of an electron is a constant value. 
of minus 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb, and V is the velocity of the electron. So if you're asked to calculate the magnetic force in an electron, you use this formula. If you're asked to calculate the magnetic force in an electron, you use this formula. For an electron, for an electron, you use this formula. But for a wire, if you're asked to calculate the magnetic force for an electron, you use this formula. But if you're asked to calculate the magnetic force for a wire, you use this formula. This formula is for a wire or a conductor. This formula is for a wire or a conductor. At this point, we have summarized the two important formula that is used in magnetism. The first formula is magnetic, for, magnetic force is equal to the product of magnetic field times current times length of the conductor. The second formula is magnetic force is equal to the magnetic field in Tesla times the charge of the electron in column times the velocity of the electron in meter per second. So at this point, we we'll look at some examples and calculations on how we can use these two formulas to make different calculations. So example one. So example one, we have looked at the two different formulas that we can use to calculate any question under magnetism. We have looked at the first formula that magnetic force is equal to the product of magnetic field times current times the length of the conductor. And we said that formula is used to calculate the, any question on wire or conductor. Now we look at a different formula where we saw that magnetic force is equal to the product of magnetic field times the charge times the velocity of the electron. Now let's look at a typical question where we can use those formulas. This question says, what is the force on a wire of length 200 cm? The question says, what is the force on a wire? The first thing that will come to your mind when you see this word wire is F is equal to BIL. Because we said F, magnetic force, is equal to this formula. Magnetic force, Fm, is equal to BIL. This formula is used to calculate any question that has to do with a wire or a conductor. Now this question is what is the force of a wire of length 200 cm and carrying a current of 10,000 milliampere when placed at right angle in a magnetic field of 0.45 Tesla. The first thing you do in this calculation, the first thing you do after writing your solution, the first thing you do in every physics question is to write out your given parameters. So we start with the given parameters. What are the given parameters in this question? That's the first thing you need to do. This is called uniqueness in solving. Uniqueness in solving is that you must show your parameters before putting them into the formulas. So what are the given parameters in this question? The first thing they gave to me is the length, which is 200 centimeter. They gave me the length, which is the length L. The length L is equal to 200 centimeter. But we are not using CGS, we are using MKS. CGS is centimeter gram second, and MKS is meter kilogram second. So we convert this centimeter to meter. Converting this centimeter to meter, we divide this by 100. And if you divide by 100, you have 2 meters. So we have converted the length from centimeter to meter. The next parameter in this question carrying a current. The current on the conductor is 10,000 milliampere. 10,000 milliampere. So we write here the current, the current I in this conductor is 10,000 milliampere. We can't leave it or use this in milliampere to solve. So we convert it from milliampere to ampere. And converting 10,000 milliampere to ampere, you divide by 1,000. Dividing by 1,000, we have converted this. This is equal to 10 ampere. We have converted the current from milliampere to ampere. The next parameter in this question is the magnetic field. The magnetic field is 0.45 Tesla. The unit of magnetic field is Tesla, capital T. So we write here, B is equal to 0.45 Tesla. Now we can substitute them into the formula. We said we use this formula, F, magnetic field is equal to the product of magnetic field times current times length when we have a conductor. We use this formula when the question has to do with 
a conductor or a wire. So if you substitute these given parameters into this formula, the magnetic force, the magnetic force is equal to the magnetic field is 0 0.45 tesla. 0 0.45 tesla. Whenever you are imputing the subscript, whenever you are imputing the variables, you must impute them with the unit. Whenever you are imputing the variables, you must impute them with the unit. The magnetic field is 0 0.45 tesla. The current times the current is 10 ampere times the length of the conductor is 2 meters. 0 0.45 times 10 times 2 is equal to, it means the magnetic force, the magnetic force, this is equal to 9. The unit of magnetic force, the unit of magnetic force is Newton. So the answer to this question is 9 Newton. The question says what is the force on the wire? So the force on this wire is equal to 9 Newton. Remember, so example 2, example 2 on magnetism. This, this question is here is what is the force per meter of length? What is the force per meter of length on a straight wire? What is the force per meter of length on a straight wire carrying a 20.5 ampere current? when perpendicular to a 1.50 tesla magnetic field. This question is very straightforward. But before you start your question, or before you start solving, the first thing you need to take note of, this question says what is the force per meter of length on a straight wire? As far as you are seeing this word wire, the formula that should come to your mind is magnetic force. Magnetic force is equal to the product of magnetic field times current times length. This is the formula used to calculate the magnetic force on a wire or on a conductor. But this question says what is the force per meter of length? It means we are looking for this question, we are looking for solution first. In this question, in this question we are looking for M over M. Magnetic force per meter of length. We are looking for F over M. From this formula, F is equal to BIL. From this formula, F is equal to BIL. This M in this formula means the length of the conductor. M is equal to L. So from this formula, from this formula, I know that magnetic force is equal to BIL. It means that if I make F over L, so that's the formula, I have that F subscript M over L is equal to the product of the magnetic field times current. This F over L is called the force per unit length or force per meter of length. This is what they are asking us to calculate. In this question, they gave me the magnetic field. They gave me B to be 1.50 tesla and the current to be 20.5 ampere. So the magnetic field is 1.50 tesla and the current I is 20.5 20 ampere. So if you substitute it into this formula, you have that the magnetic force per unit length, F over L. Force per unit length is F over L. Force per length. Force per length is equal to the magnetic field, which is 1.50 times 1.50 tesla times 20.5 ampere. 1.50 times 20.5, 1.50 times 20.5. If you check 1.50 tesla times 20.5, it's going to give us the force per length. The force per unit length of the wire is 1.50 tesla times 20.5 ampere. 1.50 tesla times 20.5 is 30.75. 30 30.75. But the unit of force per unit length, the unit of force is Newton and the unit of length is meter. So since they are supposed to have no force per unit length, the unit is going to be Newton per meter.